Welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. Today is Monday, July 26, and it's 2021. This is a YouTube live streaming event. And whether you are joining me for the first time or you are returning, I am so glad that you're here. Welcome. We've got something really different tonight. I'm going to teach you how to create a squash card. I'm going to teach it to you one way, but I have several other samples to share with you using all different kinds of products, and, and there are three different sizes. Now, the great thing about tonight's project, not only is it really kind of clever and different, but I also have a very detailed project sheet for you. You're going to be able to find the link to the project sheet when tonight's live stream is over. It's going to be down in the video description below, which is below the title for tonight's video. You're going to be able to navigate there, print it, download it to your computer. It's going to have multiple pictures of all the projects, not just the one I'm demonstrating. There are going to be cutting dimensions and all the supplies listed for you, so there's no guesswork. But I'm excited that tonight's video is going to include a lot of details and a lot of tips for you that are going to be making it easy for you to recreate this project at home. Now, a couple things before we get started. First, we would love to interact with you if you are here during the live chat or watching the replay. In order to comment or chat, you will need to be logged into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address. That is a requirement of YouTube, not of Lisa's Stamp Studio. In addition to that, the last thing is I want to introduce you to Gina Curcio Hawley. You'll see Gina's name here in blue, and you'll also see that she is a Curcio. Gina is my daughter. My daughter. She is the sales and marketing director here at Lisa Stamp Studio, and she is definitely more than helpful and versed in answering your questions. So please reach out to her. She's been stamping for 23 years, so she's able to answer all those questions you might have. Because honestly, during the live stream, it is impossible for me to keep up with your comments and questions while I'm trying to stamp. So that's why Gina is here. I think we're all ready. I'm gonna go ahead and pivot the camera down and we'll get you ready to go. Here we go. I hope that you're gonna enjoy tonight's project. And if you do, when it's done, if you do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button here on YouTube. That is a huge help with us leaving content free here. And if you would share this video to your Pinterest board or to your crafty friends, other social media platforms, it is a huge help as well. I want to give you another reminder. This is almost over. There is a huge designer series paper sale, 15% off of the papers that are in the select series, which quite frankly is most of them. 15% off equates to the shipping and even some sales tax for those of you that are in a sales tax region. Just want to make sure that I remind you of that because I love designer series paper and you're going to see why tonight. All right, we're going to start with the paper trimmer. We're going to use that first. I'm going to just kind of check and see that I'm inside your camera view. Let me just kind of zoom in just a little bit more. We are primarily going to use the scoring blade, but it also houses a cutting blade. They stay on this clear cutting guide at the same time because they navigate up and down out of the way, which means you don't have to take them off. It's an all-in-one tool. The clear guide is gonna make it very easy for you to see measurements on both sides. This side goes up to about one and a half inches, and then it has an extension arm if you're ever working with long pieces of cardstock, perhaps you're a scrapbooker. So this is a great tool, and you're gonna see why tonight. We are actually gonna do some scoring. Nothing difficult about this project. We're gonna start with a square. Now this first size I'm going to teach you is actually a six by six squash card. So it has a squash fold to the card. And I have two other samples to share with you in various sizes, and I can't wait to share with you all the ideas you can do with it. We are gonna do some scoring. So with that light blade here, I am gonna line this up at the three inch mark. There's a nice straight ledge here. Now three inches is exactly half of this six by six piece. So lining that up here, I am going to score, and then I'm gonna open up my yarn and I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna score the other direction. So all we've done is create four equal quadrants so that it's in half in both directions. One more score line, and this is where that clear cutting track comes into play. I am going to go tip to tip on the diagonal. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna line up the top tip in the track. Boy, that's a lot of T's. The top tip in the track and the bottom tip down here in the track. That's going to allow me to make sure that I've got it as even as possible. And I'm looking just to make sure I'm not moving it. I'm trying to keep my head out of your camera view. And then once I have that aligned, we're going to go ahead and we are going to score straight down on the diagonal. All right. That's all we need to do. So I've got one of these here. 
And I'm going to bring in two others that I have already done. They are identical. All three of them, they're the same. They're all going to be the exact same size for this specific squash fold card. Now, you're going to want to go up and you're going to want to crease on those score lines. And this is where your bone folder comes into play, a really important tool. So I'm going to start here in the center and I am going to crease and then I'm turning it and doing it in the other direction. And now you can see those four quadrants better. Remember, this one is on the diagonal. So let's go ahead and let's meet up those tips. Oftentimes, none of us score perfectly. So this is a great time to kind of shimmy your paper to make sure those ends are as even as you can get them. And then we're going to crease. So we have one here, and I did one ahead of time, and then I have a third. So we have three of them. You're going to notice that the diagonal is going in the same direction on all of these. Now, I'm going to move you out just a little bit because it's going to get a little bit larger, and it's going to squash to make this fold. Let's start by talking about how we're going to assemble it. When it squashes close, these are all going to contract and that's what's called the squash fold. But when it opens, it's going to expand or explode. And it's really fun. So let's go ahead and let's start with one of these. And you're going to see I have a solid panel up here in the top right corner. We are looking for another solid panel in the top left corner. And what's going to happen is we're going to connect those, but we're going to do it on the diagonal. That's going to be very important for this to come together. So what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to find the two areas that I want to connect and I'm going to place them here. The next thing you need to know is that one of these is going to have the peak towards the center. Do you see it? And the other one is going to have the peak toward the center on the back side. So let's break this down a little bit for you. What I like to do before I start assembling is I like to hold it on the diagonal. This is that diagonal score line. So I'm putting my fingers up underneath here and I'm pushing. Do you see how it's coming together? And then I'm going to fold it down and I'm going to press, and I'm gonna come over it with my bone folder, okay? So that's one. This one now, you're gonna see that I have it going down. But just to make life easy, we can go ahead and just do the same thing, and we're gonna press it, and we're gonna create another square. So in essence, all three of these are gonna look exactly the same in just a moment. And then here is that last one. Come up in the center, and then squeeze it down, and just push. And we're going to go over that with the bone folder. All right, so these are all identical. Do you see how they're all folded towards the center? Okay, we're going to open up the first one on the diagonal. You're going to see that there is actually a empty space here, and this is where we're going to put this one. But because these points are coming up, these points have to go down in order for this to squish. So we're going to flip this. And what we're going to do now on the diagonal, the points are here at the top, is we're going to take these two solid squares and we're going to put them together. Now, I am not a fan of liquid glue. You guys all know that if you've been here before. But I find that it is really important for this project because it's going to give you a little bit of wiggle room to get these panels together. So let me give you an idea of what we're going to do here. I love this glue holder, by the way. It keeps my liquid glue always at the top. This is not a Stampin' Up! product, so it's not in my online store, but you're going to be able to find it over at lisastampstudio.com under Shop and then Craft Room Favorites. There I have a whole list of page of items that I use here in the studio that aid me in my creating, and that's where that is. So I'm going to add a little glue here, and I'm going to come around the perimeter, and I'm not going to work too close because I am messy with liquid glue. Is anybody else like that but me? And now, again, with my peak at the top, remember, these are pointing up and these are pointing down. We are going to attach these two panels. So I'm going to put those here like so. I am looking my best to align them here inside the crease. All right, so now we have two. Remember, we have one more. And you'll recall that these peaks are going in and these peaks are going down. So what we have to do is mimic this one. They have to be alternating. So what I'm looking to do is see if this one's up, and it is, and I'm going to pivot this so that it's on the diagonal, so it's all going in the same direction, and this one is going to go here. So I'm going to go ahead and take my liquid glue, and I'm going to add that here. So I like to get it started a little bit further away from the edge because, yeah, I'm messy. I think the problem is I use too much, and then it oozes out the sides. Now for this, it's going to work really, really well because it's going to give you time to kind of shimmy these panels a little bit to get them aligned as good as possible. And then we're gonna press that in place. 
Now, the next thing that we're going to do once we have this assembled is we're going to talk about decorating the inside while it's kind of all nice and flat here. And I still have my liquid glue aside. And because this might seem a little bit overwhelming at first, I want to talk to you about the panels. You're going to see that there are one, two, three, four panels that are solid squares. The rest of these are all in triangles. You're probably thinking, well, how are we going to do that? All right, so let's skip over to that step right now. I'm going to bring back my paper trimmer once again, but this time we're going to bring in the scoring blade. Or I'm sorry, the cutting blade. Now I'm rummaging through my papers to find the ones that I need, and I have pulled out this beautiful designer series paper. Now, all the cutting dimensions for these three size squash fold cards are going to be in that free project sheet. That link is down below the title. It'll be there after the live stream is over. I am going to cut this on the diagonal. And because this is cut slightly smaller than the actual square quadrant in the squash fold, it's going to fit perfectly. So again, we're going to use that clear track to our guide. I'm lining up the top and the bottom peak of that designer series paper right inside that black area where the, uh, the trimmer blade is going to score and cut. And that is going to give us this. So let's go ahead and let's put some of these together. Now, I want to show you one that I started ahead of time only because I don't think you're going to want to sit and watch me put it all together because it's, it's pretty repetitious in some areas. But I want to talk to you about what we're going to do because I have an important tip for you about these areas. So all I did was I took this and it's going to fit on either side of the score line. That's very important because you're going to have to cut it. Otherwise, this won't squash right. You're going to have a buckle here. So I'm going to take this end right now and I'm going to bring in my silicone craft sheet. I absolutely love this. Now, don't go away because I have a very fancy closure for this that I wanna teach you how to make as well. So I'm gonna determine what's my right side and wrong side, and I'm gonna flip that over. Because I'm not a liquid glue girl, I wanna give you a tip in case you're not as well. I like to take my adhesive and put a little dab here in the middle. That's gonna allow me to help me pick it up when there's glue on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my glue started, and I'm gonna work closer to the edges once I get it running, but I'm gonna make sure that it's really a thin coat, because as I mentioned, I have a tendency to use too much, that sticky spot, look at that. You can kind of keep my fingers nice and clean. I'm coming back here, and this is where I'm going to place the other half. The great thing about the liquid glue is it gives you shimmy time. So I'm allowing myself to be able to move it a little bit left, a little bit right. You do not want to cover the crease. That is very, very important. Now let's talk about these other solid areas. I'm just going to put this off to the side for just a minute, and I'm going to come into a piece of thick white cardstock. And we're gonna do a little bit of stamping here. This is one of my favorite parts, right, is the decorating. And I decided to use the stamp set called Celebrate Sunflowers. Now, while you might look at this and think summer, and we are in summer, it is fantastic for fall cards as well, which believe it or not, we're coming up on really, really quickly. So I'm gonna bring out my Memento Black ink pad. That's my ink pad of choice when I'm using alcohol markers because it's a water-based ink. It will not bleed. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up that little small sunflower here, and I'm going to stamp that here. Now, I have my Stampin' Scrub off camera. Now, you might use a Stampin' Chamois, um, something to clean your stamps. That's going to be really, really important. Now, while I have one of these already colored and ready for you to go, I do want to talk you through a couple tips because I have a feeling that when you see the center of this flower, you're going to question how I did that. So let's start with just teaching you a little bit about coloring the petals using the alcohol-based Stampin' Blends markers. I'm only gonna do one or two, and then we're gonna focus on the center. Now, I'm gonna be using Daffodil Delight Stampin' Blends markers. That cardstock is Bumblebee. This is one of the very few Stampin' Blends markers that does not have an identical color match and name. But Stampin' Up's color coordination is really second to none. That's the big thing with Stampin' Up. The ink and the cardstock and the markers and the embellishments all coordinate. I like to start with the lightest of the two shades first, and you're gonna see that they're dual ended. One is the brush and one is the pen, chiseled, more of a brush tip. Depending on the area that you're coloring is really gonna be up to you on what you're gonna do. I'm gonna start with the brush tip because I like that little tip on here. and I'm gonna color this in just like I would any other marker, nothing fancy about it. 
But the only difference with this marker versus dye-based marker is it has an alcohol base to it. So you need just a couple seconds for that alcohol to evaporate before you move on to the next shade. Now these are sold in a combination, so you're gonna get them both. They certainly can be used individually. A lot of you have asked me about that. The answer is, of course you can, but here is what I love about them. You see the artist's sketches here inside the flower for definition? I call those my cheat lines. So I'm gonna come right over there and I'm gonna mimic those and that's where I'm gonna put my darker shade. If this did not have those cheat lines, I would gravitate to the center of my flower where it would intuitively be darker and get lighter as it comes out. Just pick one side and make them all the same. Don't overthink it. Again, that alcohol is processing and evaporating. And now I'm coming in with the light once again. And this is where the magic comes in. Now you can see that this area is very, very small. And oftentimes you don't have to come back and re-blend these when the area is tiny. But just for the sake of teaching you how this works, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag that dark into the light. Nothing fancy again, just pulling it. As the alcohol processes, you're gonna notice how those harsh lines between the two tones now actually become more of a blended look. Really fun to use and it's foolproof. Now let's talk about the center. Believe it or not, there are Stampin' Blends markers in black, and they are often overlooked, and I'm going to hope to change your mind right now. Light and dark once again. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to use the chisel tip this time, and this is the light, and I'm going to go ahead and add that color here in the center. Now, this is where the broad tip would come in really, really handy for those areas in the middle, but I want to make sure, because this is an alcohol-based marker, that it doesn't bleed outside of my lines especially when you have a brand new marker. It tends to be really, really juicy. All right, so we've got our color there. Again, you're gonna start to see it turn a little bit lighter because it's starting to evaporate, that alcohol base. This is the dark marker. This time I'm gonna use the other tip, which is the fatter tip. I'm gonna come back in here in the center and I'm gonna add a little color here and I'm gonna add a little color here around the outline. It is not important that this is perfect. Just add a little pigmentation. Finally, have to allow a little bit more time for that to evaporate. Now, when I first looked at this, I was like, that is too dark. That is not what I wanted. So I thought, okay, let's come back with the lighter one and let's pull these together and let's see if that's gonna give me what I want. Now, I love the black blends. There's definitely a place for them. And as I waited and waited, it still wasn't what I wanted. So here comes the color lifter that provides all the miracle work you need. And this is a great tip for using these darker pigmented alcohol-based markers. The color lifter actually lifts pigmentation and it'll actually move some of it as well. Now, while this is processing, let me talk to you a little bit about the moving. So let's say for instance, that I had a little bit of color right here outside that line. Do you see it right here? After that alcohol has processed, I'm gonna come in with that chiseled end of my color lifter, and you're gonna see it is colorless. And what I'm able to do is I'm gonna turn my paper and I'm gonna scribble a little color far away from it. Do you see as it starts to evaporate, it's literally eliminating that color. So that little wet spot is gonna to start to evaporate because that's the alcohol and it fixes the little boo-boos and it's fantastic when you're coloring and it's great for these Stampin' Blends markers. This technique works very well on your lighter shades. Your darker shades, you're gonna be a little bit more careful because of the pigmentation involved, but it hides a multitude of sin. Now, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna come over to the other side, which is the thick, and watch what I'm going to do. I'm gonna drag this marker around the perimeter between the center and the outside. Do you see it changing right before your eyes? It's getting lighter, which creates continuity between the center and the outside, which makes us look not so harsh. The color lifter will pick up some of the pigmentation. Don't panic. Just rub it off on your scratch paper until it runs clear, and then you're good to go. Now, remember, it's going to be wet, so it's going to just kind of look a little bit obtrusive here, but that's going to be okay. The great thing about this stamp set is it has coordinating sunflower dyes. And I have loved using these because they make my life super duper easy. Now I'm using my Titan tray. This is another one of my craft room favorites because I was losing too many of these itty bitty little dies. This is magnetic 
And I love it because if I go over to the die cutting machine, which is my stamp and cut and emboss machine, I don't have to worry about losing them on the floor when I'm taking them over or bringing them back. Here's my clear cutting mat. And what you're gonna do when this is all finished is you're going to line this up. Now, as I said, I have one that's already done for you. Oftentimes when I put this in my die cutting machine, it does this and it shifts between these two clear mats. If you have not invested in this, Post-it note labeling and cover-up tape. It's also in my craft room favorites. This stuff is amazing. Believe it or not, I get a ton of emails of people telling me, thank you, thank you, thank you for that tip. This has saved me over and over again. Washi tape was sometimes getting stuck too thin and it would peel up my image. I found post-it notes was really a big waste of money. But when I ran this through the die cutting machine, I'm actually able to lift this right off I can reuse this numerous times before I have to throw it away, which makes it very, very cost effective. I think you would love, love, love this tape. Now, the things over in my craft room favorites, I wanted to make sure I mentioned to you, I am an affiliate with Amazon. So if you buy them through my craft room favorites, it's going to help me immensely. So thank you very much. We earn a very, very tiny commission, but it helps. So there you go. Look at the inside of that flower. Is that incredible? That color lifter really does the trick, doesn't it? All right, so the reason we've done this is because we're gonna be decorating the front and the inside. Now, I have another panel here that I am going to show you. Um, actually, I'm gonna take one of these out because I forgot to cut one. I already stamped it, but we're gonna cheat. So I've got a piece of white cardstock here. Now, I wanna call your attention to the squash fold one more time. Do you see these panels that are solid? This is what we're gonna fill next. Remember, this is a diamond shape. So that's gonna be very, very important when you go to stamp inside of here. So let me show you. I am going to put this on my grid paper. This is a Stampin' Up! product. It's in my online store. These are the large ones, 16 inch. We've got smaller ones. They fit our stamp positioning tool as well. I'm looking to align here and here so I know it's on the diamond shape so it's gonna fit that panel perfectly. I've got the Bumblebee ink. Remember we talked about the color coordination and how much we love that? Well, here is a good example of it. But look at the size of this sunflower. Now, if you're like me, you're going to want to like go like this because it's intuitive, right? But believe it or not, you're going to miss a bunch of spots. So pick up those ink pads. There are ridges on the sides for your fingers to keep them nice and clean. And you're going to ink this way. By inking the image face up, you're going to ensure you're not going to miss a spot putting this back here on my grid paper so I have it on my diamond shape. I'm just gonna place that right on top of there. And then we are going to press. Take your time when you have these beautiful detailed stamped images. You wanna make sure you don't miss anything. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so I've got that right off camera here. And then I wanna show you one other thing I did. So I've got another piece here and I'm gonna put this on the diagonal as well. And this time I'm gonna do my greeting. So I'm going to go back to that Memento black ink pad, and from that same sunflower set, I've got the greeting. So I'm going to travel across this pad to make sure I don't miss my letters, and then I'm going to take this on the diamond shape one more time, and we're going to go this way, and we're going to stamp, and we're going to lift, because you want it to go in the right direction. The first time I made this, I was like, I'm going to stamp it like this, and well, that didn't work out very well. So let's go ahead and push those off to the side, and let's do some decorating. Now remember, I have an amazing closure for this, so make sure you hang with me. Now I'm gonna move the camera out just a little bit so that you can work with me as we go along. Now I've got another piece of designer series paper here, and this is going to go right here. As we've talked about before, liquid glue is really your best friend because you can do some wiggle room, but you know I'm messy with it. So we're gonna cheat a little bit tonight just to speed things up a little bit. This is my Stampin' Seal Plus. It is very, very strong. I like the liquid glue better so I can get to my edges. So let's go ahead and take this one, and this is gonna go in my first squash fold panel. It's gonna leave a very narrow margin. The other reason I love using my designer series paper like this, I can use up all my scraps. This panel right here, Remember our flower? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add adhesive in your case. Oh, look at that, I stamped both sides. I think I have another one. I do. I'm like, wow, which one do we like better? <laughs> Let's go ahead and add adhesive to this one. I practice a lot before I'm live with you. So that's what all those are. But look at, I've got my next cards all started, don't I? 
Remember on the diamond. So if you need to pivot your design, make sure you do so. And then this is gonna go in this quadrant. Here is where I'm going to take that greeting. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip that over as well. And I am going to add my adhesive along the edges. Again, I'm an advocate now for this project with liquid glue, even though I'm not using it, I'm just doing this because it's faster. And we're gonna look for that margin all the way around. You wanna stay within the folds. These little panels are going to hide any imperfections of your seams as well. This is fantastic. Now over here, let's go ahead and let's do another panel for this one. And I decided to make this the same. Now the great thing about the designer series papers with Stampin' Up, isn't that pretty too? Is the color coordination as I had mentioned. But the packages of designer series papers coordinate with one another in the package. One side of the paper tends to be themed and the other side is generic, allowing you to use it all year round. Look at that, isn't this fantastic? Okay, but we're not done. So let me show you how this closes because we're gonna work on the cover and the special closure for the squash fold. Here in the center, you're gonna see how these are going to go down. So we're gonna pinch these, I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong way. These are going to go down. This is going to squash in the center. Well, I'm trying to say inside your camera view, this is not working so good. These are gonna go down and these are gonna come in. So let's work on our squash. So here's our first one. And then comes our next one and this one. And then we are gonna collapse this card. Okay. I am I'd be having a hard time. Why am I having a hard time? It's because you're all watching me. That's what's wrong. All right, now let's talk about here on the front. Now this is gonna be really, really boingy until we're finished. Let's go ahead and work on that square. I've got a piece of designer series paper here that matches the others. Let's just go ahead and adhere this and I'm gonna tack that down. This now is going on the front panel here. Just like before, I wanna call your attention to something. This is going to be on a different angle. This is actually going to be squared when it's closed because it squashes close. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be very, very careful now on where we add that sunflower. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip this upside down. Alcohol markers have a tendency to bleed through your cardstock. So always make sure that your work surface is well protected. And then I'm gonna use my take your pick tool with that paper piercing tool attachment to remove those backings. I love this, it's kind of like my other hand and it helps with my arthritic fingers as well. And then this is going to go down here in the lower corner. Now, this is where a greeting would go. And I wanna show you another product that I'm having lots and lots of fun with. This is called Many Messages and it has the messages dies. Now, at first glance, you might think, oh, that's a fantastic stamp set with all those different greetings. Look at all of them and you're correct, but I wanna show you one thing. It is one large background stamp. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you ink up either just a specific area or you ink up the whole thing, which is what I do, because look at this. This die cuts out every single one at one time. Look at this. So what I do is I go ahead and I ink it. I use my Stamparetta stamp positioning tool where you can do it right on your paper if you want just a specific one. And then it die cuts the greetings. And here is one that I've used. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out so that you can see it. But guess what? I have all these other ones already made for all lots of other cards that I'm gonna be creating. It's a fantastic way to do the work once and then have all the greetings for future cards. So let's go ahead and let's flip this over as well. I am going to grab two more dimensionals here and here. We wanna make sure those are well balanced for mailing. We'll remove those backings. And then this is going to go here. I'm gonna tuck a little bit underneath it. And now we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna work on the closure for this card. This time, we're gonna use a separate small piece of square bumblebee cardstock. We are gonna need to do a little bit of scoring. So let me go ahead and bring in my trimmer that's here. This is two and three quarters by two and three quarters. When I show you the other two sizes, remember this is the six by six, these sizes in my project sheet are all gonna vary. That's all printed for you nice and easy to go. 
This score line is going to be at one and three eighths because that is the halfway mark for this square. And just like we've done before, it's in half vertically and it's going to be in half horizontally as well. So we're going to end up with those four quadrants. All right, that's all that you need to do for this. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to take our scissors. And I like to use my long tip for these and you are gonna cut out one of these squares. And I'm just gonna cut that away. That is going to leave you with this. These are going to fold up, but you're gonna notice that it's a little bit bulky because none of us scores perfectly. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna cut one of these on an angle just to compensate and give us a bit more room. So I'm gonna fold in and then I'm going to fold in. Now let me show you how this comes together. And I'm going to open this up and I'm gonna put either liquid glue or adhesive here, again, just to make it quicker for this live stream. We'll go ahead and use a little bit of adhesive. This is how strong my adhesive is. And then I am going to close this. So it's like a little tiny pocket. Do you see it? All right. Then what I did is I cut myself a piece of designer series paper. It's a little tiny, tiny piece right here that's going to fit on top of here. Definitely liquid glue because you want to get to all those creases. That's very, very important. I did make one ahead of time because I wanted to make sure that it was well dry so that I can show you how this closes. All right, so let me put this off to the side and then I'm going to show you the other sizes for this squash fold. All right, so here's the card that we made. You see it? All right. So we are going to fold these in. Let's go ahead and pinch these. These are gonna go down. Do you see it? And then this is gonna come in, and this is gonna come in. The more you use it, the easier it is to open and close. Is this not incredible? I'm telling you what, if you make this for the kids, they're gonna go crazy for it. But remember, we made this little corner? Well, that's how you're gonna keep it closed. I decided to make a little pocket for mine, which fits perfectly here. You could also use a binder clip and decorate it with some ribbons. It does fit in a standard envelope, but I have to be honest with you, it's really, really thick and it's obviously square. I prefer to put mine in a bubble mailer. I think it's totally worth the extra few dollars to mail it so that it gets there beautifully. Now, let me show you the others that I created. Let me go ahead and pull those in for you. And my first one is this one. This is seven by seven, and this one is a little bit different because unlike the sunflower one, watch, you're gonna see a big difference on this one. Are you ready? This only has two panels. So we have one here and one here, which means this panel becomes the back. Now, originally I was going to put a ribbon around this, but it fell across the here. So that's another reason why this closure is perfect. This is from the stamp set that's nothing better than, it has coordinating dies. I use the sunny sentiments over here for the birthday greeting, but look how fun. Again, on the diagonal really, really makes it really fun to use. Now let's talk about what else you could use this for. And I'm gonna talk about that in the next size. So let's go ahead and close that one up here. So we've got the six by six and we have a seven by seven. And this next one is even bigger yet. This is an eight and a half by eight and a half. Now you might be thinking, oh, that's big. It is bigger, but it's totally worth it. This uses the stamp set called Garden Bird Houses. And if you're looking at the designer series paper thinking, where did that come from? Well, it's coming your way on August 3rd. That's a brand new designer series paper with a harvest theme that's in the brand new mini catalog. Isn't this striking? Now I'm moving it left to right on purpose because it is large. Now let's talk about this. Oftentimes you may be making a card for an entire office and everybody has to sign it. Go ahead and put white panels here. Places for everyone to put their own words and their own signature. Great place to put recipes. Wouldn't that be fantastic for a shower gift or for a mother to be? Fantastic. Great for graduation, retirement, um, wedding showers. They can be all kinds of sentiments on things that she, the future bride needs to know about being married or photographs. If you are taking photographs and you only want them solid, you've got spots, or perhaps you feel comfortable with the print diagonally cutting it and they will fit side by side to make an entire image here, very much like our designer series paper. But this is so much fun. Now, I will tell you, 
that this one is rather large, so it's going to require more postage than the others to mail. But quite frankly, I think it's really kind of a special gift, even a milestone birthday. So we have the eight and a half by eight and a half, which of course is this one here with the birdhouses, seven by seven. And then the one we started with are six by six. I want to know which one is your favorite. And I want to know how you will close your squash card fold. Go ahead and leave me a comment. I'm going to turn the camera around so I can give you some information about our next live stream. Okay. I hope that you've enjoyed that. That is such a fun fold. And once you make it, you can decide how many panels you want to make. And you can just keep going. If you want to make an entire album out of it, you certainly can do that. Two folds makes a great card. One fold makes a great pop-up simple card. And of course, as I did with the Recelebrate Sunflowers, you can use a three. Love reading your comments about your favorites. Don't forget to grab your free project sheet down in the link below. If you're here in the live stream, Gina has shared that here in the comments. I would love it if you would do me a favor. Two things before you go. Head over to lisastampstudio.com. If you're brand new there, scroll down about halfway and a pop-up is going to come up that says to subscribe to my newsletter. And you're gonna to wanna to stay in the know because that free newsletter on every Thursday includes a tutorial not shared on any of my other platforms. And it's a no frills email and I would love to have you included. I provide generous and exclusive ordering rewards if you use my host code. All that information is on my website under rewards. And do me another favor, this is the last one. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already subscribed hit that little like button that's next to it if you've enjoyed today's video. And when you subscribe, click that little bell icon and the word all, because that's gonna send you reminders when I'm live, which is what I do here on YouTube. Now I'm gonna be live with you next Monday, which is August 2nd. I am reaching for this because we are gonna take this a step further with that brand new mini catalog. That is where those beautiful Harvest Designer Series papers came from. This is debuting on August 3rd, and I've got some fantastic projects to share with you. I will be back with you live next Monday, August 2nd at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and I hope that you'll be here to join me. Gina, thanks for all your hard work and moderating tonight, and thank you all for joining me. I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great night.